I keep emphasizing to my pupils the importance of boosting vocabulary and developing a more precise understanding of the meaning of words. Keep looking words up in dictionaries, I cry. However, what sometimes happens is that pupils then go away and learn some unhelpfully complex or archaic words which are next to useless for a GCSE exam. They diligently use them within a sentence for paper two only for the sentence to sound ridiculous or fail to flow naturally. So within this set of three videos, first on nouns, second on verbs, third on adjectives and adverbs, I will share with you some more complex words hand-picked from the past three years of CIE exam papers. Many of these words you will already know or kind of know. Yet what paper one tests more than anything is perhaps how precisely you can understand and write about language. In other words, slightly vague definitions or uses are unlikely to get you that coveted grade nine. After including some activities aimed at helping you learn some more exact definitions, I will incorporate some 0990 s questions which will give you an opportunity to consolidate both your understanding and your exam technique. My god, this video is going to be useful. Stay tuned, you're watching Schofield on Shakespeare. I have produced an exam style handout for this video, which will make it slightly easier to complete the activities shown on screen. Please email me at Schofield on Shakespeare at gmail.com if you would like a copy of this. Anyway, here are the 15 nouns that I've combed from recent CIE exam papers. Remember, I'm not saying that these words are all particularly complicated. However, how many of these words can you give a genuinely precise, detailed definition for? Why not press pause now to have a think and say some of these definitions out loud? So I suspect some of you have established that you are a little hazy on some of the definitions of these words. Remember, for the CIE 0990 paper, question 2D is worth a whopping 15 marks for how precise and imaginative you can be about the meaning and effect of trickier words, whilst there are a further 7 marks on offer for 1B and 2B so more than 25% of the marks available for the entire paper. This brings us on to an obvious question. What is the best way to learn vocabulary in English? Yes, mountains of regular reading helps, but this takes time. And by definition, if you are watching this video, I suspect that time may not be something that you have a great deal of. I think it's helpful to bear in mind similar principles to when learning vocabulary in other languages. Break down the words to learn in smaller chunks. Be active and look for opportunities to consolidate. So let's start with these five beauties. And with this word in particular, awnings, used in the November 2018 0500 paper, within a fairly long, complex sentence. The context is that Jane is looking at a market first thing in the morning. The stall holders are getting things ready and adjusting fluttering awnings and canvas covers. From the context, you can often get pretty close to identifying the meaning of words, although, as previously bleated, getting pretty close would not be sufficient for that grade nine. Why not have a go now at defining what awnings might mean?
awnings is probably best defined visually. Get the idea? So let's move on to Carousel. Here's how it was used in the March 2019 0500 paper. CIE love their imagery, don't they? From the dismal, predictable simile about the market being like a large beast, we have a carousel of sound being cooked up with hands. What's the context? Well, the narrator has auditioned to become the drummer in a small jazz band who would be playing a concert within a bandstand of a local park. So, how might you define carousel here? The key principle is that the noun is being used metaphorically. But to understand this, you need to know the literal definition. There are two possibilities. With, once again, images being helpful. It strikes me that the writer is almost certainly referencing the first definition, the merry-go-rounds, in order to create a parallel between the music making and their location within a bandstand. Perhaps within the acoustics of the bandstand, it feels as though the music is going round and round. Next noun is consternation, starring within the June 2018 0500 paper. This time the text is about coal mining, with shaft referring to the vertical passage from ground level down towards the pit and iron box, a clumsy metaphor for the lift. It has just plummeted seven metres or so due to an electrical fault. How might the miners be feeling about this? Have a go at defining consternation. Well, it's a feeling of worry, shock and confusion. What on earth is happening to the men? Now on to contraction from the 0990 June 2020 paper. In this rather strange section of the text, the narrator Clay is reflecting on losing his job as a designer and social media voice for the HQ of a trendy burger company. What happened to contribute to him losing his job? Define contraction. Well, it's a reduction in something here, a squeezing, a tightening, in this case resulting in a reduced number of food chains around the country. Now for the fifth now. Deluge from the June 2018 0500 paper. We are back in the bowels of the earth, underground in a coal mining pit. What might the quantity of dust be like down there? Define deluge. Note that this noun is typically used to describe torrential rain or a massive amount of water. Using it in this context makes it seem as though the dust is pouring down over the miners. So five nouns. I want you to have an incredibly precise understanding of their meanings. Perhaps this visual gap fill will help. Press pause now to plop the words in the right places, you clever viewers and subscribers. Well, an interesting combination of sentences plundered from a variety of different sources including the Primrose Awnings Company, the Daily Mail, and Mary Elizabeth Braddon's delicious Lady Audley's Secrets. Question one is, of course, consternation. The maid cannot believe Lady Audley's dramatic transformation and is in deep shock. Some more Lady Audley's secret action here. 
The clue is in the subject of the inky clouds. Some beautiful descriptive writing here. You might even decide to copy out and use a fragment of this sentence within your own paper two writing. Some pathetic fallacy as the filthy weather and pouring rain outside reflects George's mood. Far more prosaic this one, I'm afraid. Can't beat a blind style structure to show off to the neighbours during those gorgeous summer days. This one is pretty obvious. It's a carousel which moves seamlessly around and around in a circle. So that just leaves contraction. The economy is finally getting back on track following significant decline. Time now for a quick paper one style activity before moving on to the next set of five. And it's a 2B style question for you. Good luck. Press pause to write down your answers to the questions on screen now. And here's the mark scheme. Press pause to read through and mark your work. Time for the next set of five nouns. We've got some corkers here, haven't we? First up, demeanour, used in the March 2020 0500 paper in an article entitled National Doctors' Day. This article frets about doctors' mental health. Here it points to the pressures they are under to appear strong. Surely someone who cures other people shouldn't need help themselves. So, can you pinpoint the meaning of demeanour? Don't get confused between demeanour and countenance. The former's definition is shown on screen. Countenance is someone's facial expression. Let's move on to Ecosystem, used in the June 2019-0990 paper. This article talks about the effects of tourists on Africa's wildlife. They here are the Juberts, wildlife documentary makers, who have spent an extensive period of time in Africa. Define ecosystem. So it's the interrelatedness of different types of living creatures and the impact they have on their environments. Now number eight is Hue, which featured in the 0500 November 2019 paper. This article is about an Inuit adventure cruise in Arctic Canada. They are walruses. How do they change slightly in appearance as they drag their heavy bodies out of the sea? Define hue. So hue relates to subtleties of colour. Next up. Lethargy, which was in the 0500 June 2018 paper. This article is about a son's work experience in his dad's company. He is dad, and this is the son's first day of work experience. How were the two feeling in the morning before leaving? Define lethargy. The adjective lethargic is probably used more it's that lack of energy, feeling of too tired apathy. Now for the final noun in this set of five. It's Mirage from the 0990 November 2019 paper. We're back with the adventure cruise in the Canadian Arctic. In a typical CIE packed with imagery to write about sentence, we are the Taurus and a large male is a polar bear. The scenery is beautiful, but 
What does the writer mean by ice mirages? Define mirage. So a mirage is a deception, something that doesn't actually exist, an optical illusion. So five more words. I want you to have an incredibly precise understanding of their meanings. Can you complete the words missing from the definitions I gave? Press pause now to show off your super precise understanding of these nouns. Time to whiz through the answers. Of course, your demeanour is about your behaviour, how you come across. The ecosystem is about the way living things affect the environment. Hue is about shades, degrees of a colour. Lethargy is about that lack of energy. And finally, a mirage is something deceptive. Time for another quick paper one style activity before moving on to the next set of five. And it's a 1B activity this time. Go for it. Press pause to write down your answers to the questions on screen now. And here's the mark scheme. Press pause now to read through and mark your work. Now, before we move on to the final five, could you help me out with these quick questions? What noun beginning with C means a feeling of worry, shock or confusion? It is, of course, consternation. And tell me, what D can refer to a huge quantity of rain or water or simply a lot of something? It is of course a deluge. Time to move on to our final set of five nouns now. Kicking off with Pendulum, as used in the 0990 November 2019 paper. Painfully, I'm afraid, we're back in the Canadian Arctic. So we are the tourists and he is the guide Adam. He is on the lookout for polar bears. How is his head moving? Define pendulum. It's useful to refer to a metronome in which the pendulum moves from side to side to help keep young piano learners in time. So within this simile, the implication is that the guide's head is moving rather like this. Next now, plateau, which appeared in that classic June 2020 0990 paper. The article is about books. A comparison is made between the sales of paper books, fighting back, and ebooks, which have hit a plateau. What can this mean? Define plateau. So, in other words, the sales of ebooks have remained pretty flat. People have realised that actually there's nothing better than the feel of a real paper book, even if, say, it is second hand. Next now, proprietor, which dazzled in the same June 2020 0990 exam, but within TextB about bookshops reinventing themselves. Bookshops have had to change with the times. The text implicitly bellows. Eccentric proprietors out, cool dudes in. But what exactly does proprietor mean? So it's a type of owner. 
Next up, it's the tricky to spell repercussions, which I took from the March 2020 paper. The article features the diaries of a stressed out junior doctor. This sentence is part of a preamble prior to the actual diaries. He's going to spill the beans about how being a junior doctor affected his personal life. But what exactly does repercussions mean? So, a similar noun to consequences, except that there is generally a negative consequence. We finally got to the last noun of the video. It is sanctum, which was used in the 0500 June 2018 paper. Remember, this is the article in which a teenager goes for some work experience at his father's company. We have learned in the previous sentence that father and son have just entered the accounts department. But what might sanctum mean in this context? So we've got some hyperbole going on here to emphasise the importance of the accounts department. It is a place where you need to treat people with respect, verging on reverence, if you want to get paid on time. Here are the final five words again. I want you to know exactly what they mean and to be able to remember exactly what they mean. So on screen, you can now see five sentences in which I have replaced one of these words with a synonym. Can you work out where our final five should have been used? Press pause to get cracking. Any joy? And perhaps more interestingly, what subtle differences in meaning were there with the use of a slightly different noun? The first sentence referred to a landlord, which is pretty damn similar to proprietor. That said, a landlord will typically be paid by a tenant for using his property land, a sense we don't get with proprietor. On to the second sentence. This references some legal ramifications. Again, pretty similar to repercussions. Again, as with the noun consequence, I don't feel that ramifications points towards negative consequences of an action in the same way that repercussions does. Third sentence. And we're on to football. I don't think this synonym quite works, does it? For weight, we need pendulum. It's a giveaway with the verb swung, isn't it? Number four is another sentence about footy. And once again, the synonym is not entirely satisfactory. Once we've got the adjective inner, the sentence is crying out for sanctum to follow. It's the secret holy place at the heart of the club where Klopp comes up with his master plans. Number five is about that wretched sport, American football. Where can we shoehorn our remaining noun into this sentence? What's the difference between level and plateau? Is there a sense that with plateau, it is a particularly high level? Note this second definition, whereas a level could potentially be any one of a series of much less significant milestones. Time for one final Paper 1S activity, this time a mini 2D. Break a leg! Note I say mini 2D, as there is only one paragraph to comment on, from which you will need to take three quotations. In the real exam, of course, there are two paragraphs, from which you will need to take a total of six quotations. Of course, the passage contains words which we have been studying in this video, but do not necessarily choose these. You want to hone in on those words and phrases about which there is the most to say. And, as ever, if there's any imagery, such as similes or metaphors, choose these first. 
Press pause to have a go at this now. Before I show you my response, here are some of the suggested points on the mark scheme. Press pause now to read these through and compare to your own response. Do feel free to toggle back if you want to see the passage as a whole again. However, remember that these are only suggestions for the examiner to help inform his or her judgment. Actually, they mark based on this grid. What are the key principles? Well, you need to show a detailed, precise, imaginative understanding of both meaning and effects. You need to have chosen your quotations incredibly carefully, judiciously. If you've chosen an overly simplistic one, then there won't be enough to explore or develop. Anyway, for my first bullet point, I write, like the ghostly arms of shrunken and withered giants. The simile refers to tree's branches and suggests that they appear eerily emaciated, aged and intimidatingly looming. The adjective ghostly suggests that they appear almost supernatural in the dark night. Perhaps they are glimmering and faintly lit up by the moon. The personification creates a creepy feel. It reduces the agency of Robert and suggests that he feels compelled to go to his uncle's house. In my seconds, like threatening phantoms. This simile continues the supernatural imagery, but develops the atmosphere of menace more explicitly within the adjective threatening. Phantoms are frequently associated with death and evil, and so the effect is to imply that Robert may be in some kind of danger. And finally, for my third. Consternation shook him like a rag doll. Whereas the previous images describe branches, this is the first simile to talk directly about Robert's feelings. He is incredibly worried. The positioning of consternation as a subject implies his powerlessness. He is not in control and feels sick because of the shock tearing him from side to side. Ragdolls are notorious for being dragged around and treated particularly badly. The implication is that Robert feels similarly physically queasy. Yes, that's enough wittering from me for the time being. This has been a Schofield on Shakespeare production, which is aimed to share with you sentences which give an indication into the type of sentences you will come across within the extracts in the exam. It has encouraged you to develop a more precise understanding of vocabulary, and it has given you practice and mark schemes for three parts of the exam, 1B, 2B and 2D, with my own response available for 2D. I hope it's been helpful and many thanks for watching.